Today's episode brought to you by Judd's Hair. Consistent, non-threatening, and oh, that shine. It started out a typical day beneath an autumn sky. Judd was in the barrel room, drinking in the sweet perfume, when something caught his eye. A stray and hollow barrel had him stumped and mystified. And like Columbus on the shore, Judd was driven to explore, and bravely crawled inside. He came out of the barrel to the smell of salty air. And that was only the iceberg tip, for Judd was on a pirate ship inside a pirate's lair. The pirate turned to bribery when told he had to go with fists of gold, a flag and a brew, an honest to goodness video crew. They lifted, lifted up, up their glasses, glasses too. Judd's Wine Booty Show. <laughs> Guest starring Chris Hall. A vintner, a sailor, a rancher, and restaurateur, Wine Booty welcomes Chris Hall. Hey, Chris, how are you, man? How are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Glad you can make it here in the pirate's den. Oh, the lair. The, yes, the pirate's lair. Uh, so, welcome. It's really cool to see you. You are like a man of action. Every time I turn around here in Napa Valley, you're up to something. Winemaker, cattle rancher, olive oil presser, vegetable grower, restaurateur. There's a website, I'm sure. Yeah, longmeadowranch.com. Longmeadowranch.com. Yep. That's one easy. stop for everything. Yep. And it's located at the south end of the town That's of Saint. Right. Marina. 738 Main Street, across the Charter Road, from the southeast corner, uh, south, just south of Saint. Marina. The winery you've got. The grapes are growing up there. And we grow olives as well up there. Um, we raise cattle, we have some horses, chickens, pigs. It's kind of the modern version of the family farm in a lot of ways, but uh, it's about 650 acres, so it's a pretty big ranch. We don't just grow 650 acres of grapes by right. any means. So, uh, but it was originally planted way back in the 1800s with grapes and olives, and so we kind of continued that tradition of, of uh, growing Cabernet and a little Sangiovese and some Merlot and Cabernet Franc up there. And uh, we have the historical orchards that were originally planted back then that still exist. It's amazing. Um, so these so. fruit trees, I mean, there's still fruit trees growing? There are. There's there. still olive trees that were growing in the woods, essentially, when we got there, mm -hmm. I, that we've rehabilitated and kind of brought back to life. So our winery facility is also an olive front toil. So I, I mean, you know very well that you don't, you know, pick grapes all year long or of course not. have a lot of activity necessarily in the winery. Maybe you do. Uh, at Judd's Hill, it <laughs> seems like you're always busy here too. There's but, always something going uh, on, but I know what you mean. There's yeah, we pick grapes, you know, we pick Sauvignon Blanc in August, we pick Cabernet all the way into the end of October, mm -hmm. and then we go right into the olive harvest more or less in November all the way through the end of December or January sometimes. So we're constantly busy, we can employ all of our farm workers year round. Great thing to put on the table and complete a meal. Okay, so let's get to that. You grow all this wonderful stuff. Yeah. Right now, there's a big uh, movement in the U.S. about farm-to-table, these restaurants. That's right. They go source fresh vegetables, uh, produce, meats. Don't mind him. <laughs> He's just here. Uh, <laughs> um, and bring it right to the kitchen at the restaurant. Yeah. Cook it up. But you have no middleman. You well, are... We take it one step further. So, you know, for a long time, it actually started back when I was, like, 10 years old. Uh, kind of like a kid's lemonade stand type operation. My parents encouraged me to take the zucchini from the family garden, yeah. and the eggs from the you know, 10 or 12 chickens we had or whatever down to the farmer's market and set up a basically like a card table and, and uh, make a little bit of spending money. Uh, not so much with a couple zucchini that are too big to eat, but right. uh, in any case, it started like that and, and uh, as it progressed, we grew a little bit more, I uh, expanded the operation all the way until I was in, you know, the end of college and growing six acres of tomatoes and vegetables on our property in Rutherford. Yeah, we take it one step further where we actually are growing almost everything for our own menu ourselves. Um, we raise all of our own grass-fed beef cattle, mm -hmm. so we actually even breed the animals, cow and calf them, and, uh, and then raise them uh, to the finishing process. So, so they're on somebody's plate at that's the right. so, Range uh, Farmstead restaurant. That's correct. We, we, have, we have full vertical integration <laughs> of everything uh, from, from tomatoes to 
to uh, beef and pork and chicken and eggs. We don't we don't raise the chickens for the meat, but you know for the eggs. Yeah, for the eggs. I'm just amazed at how at, at, at how you have integrated that. As I said, this farm to table Absolutely. concept is all the rage. It makes a lot of sense. It makes but a lot of sense, but I mean, for us, it makes a lot of sense because of the way we've been doing things for 20 years. Well, that's so. what I'm saying. It's all you. That's the, right. The whole restaurant is your farm on the table. Well, and we also support our, our you know our neighbors and our friends and their wines, of course. And <laughs> Excuse you, Captain. And we do have Please. some rum. Uh, we have rum for pirates. Uh, <laughs> um, and, you know. They do have a full bar up there. Full bar. All right, you have a port for my ship. <laughs> I've got an outdoor fireplace that you can, uh, you know, fall asleep next to if you like. All right, sounds nice. <laughs> a little hot rum toddy in you and mm. a nap. Olive oil. Yeah. So the olive oil on the table. That's right. Well, we have the historical orchards I was talking mm -hmm. about, so we mill all of our own oils at the wine facility. So the oils we're using, whether it be on you know, the salad or finishing dishes out of the kitchen, uh, we use it there, but in our wine tasting room, which is also immediately adjacent to the restaurant, we do wine and olive oil tastings. So, so That's uh, right. one of the unique things is a little bit different than everybody else's wine tasting room. We also have an olive oil tasting experience uh, where you can taste our various olive oils, kind of like you would if you were a professional in Italy. We actually take shots of olive oil. Really? Uh, yeah, too. Mm. Helps prevent hangovers. <laughs> is that right? A little brace? Brace the belly with some olive oil before you go out with your grog. A couple of shots, good to go. Keeps it regular. <laughs> the wine, though. I mean, this sure. is wine moody. We're here talking about yep, wine. Right. So at at the restaurant, you also, of course, have all of your we do wine more, all of our wines right. by the glass. Um, of course, you can taste them in the wine tasting room as well. And we have others from our neighbors around the valley. But um, we primarily make Cabernet Sauvignon from mm -hmm. our hillside uh, vineyard sites up at the up at the. Uh, Long Meadow Ranch at the end of Whitehall Lane, and we also grow Sauvignon Blanc down on the Valley floor in Rutherford as well on Mee Lane. Um, so we're, you know, a smaller production. We're making about 6,000 cases total um, of all of our wines. We do make a little Sangiovese, a little Merlot, some things that we can just taste in the tasting room for wine club members and things like that. But, That's nice. That's you know, pretty small production. It's pretty small production, and you know, the style that we like to make, of course, with the restaurant kind of a concept and and uh, the food and the wine and everything is a more food friendly style, so they're typically a little bit more moderate alcohol styles, a little less extracted, nice and kind of elegant. Uh, I'm speaking about Cabernet here. Yeah, yeah, I'm you know, very familiar with your wines, having sure. known you for a while, and yeah. tried them actually at your restaurant as well. And, yeah, yeah. And I appreciate that, you know, none of them have the oak that's gonna punch you in the face. It's no, even... and they're not overly extracted either, so it's it's kind of a balanced experience that, that uh, is really complimentary to your meal, and that's what we're focused on. Riveting conversation. Don't forget, this episode brought to you by Judd's Hair. It really works. See for yourself. Oh, that shine. Now, if somebody were to bring a bottle, Absolutely. I think this is kind of cool. You have a great wine list. We do. It's extensive. We you have know, about 180 around. selections, you know, most of them being from California or the Napa Valley, but a few, you know, great eclectic ones from around the world as well. Um, mostly you know, sustainable or family owned or, you know, small production uh, kind of selections. But we also allow corkage in the restaurant. This is what is I want to ask you about. Because yeah. this is cool. I've never seen a corkage policy quite like this. Well, we were going to have no corkage originally, which is the which was the, the great idea to begin with, because there's not many people in doing that in, in St. Helena or around town at all. Mm -hmm. but I, I thought, what better than a no corkage than $2 corkage. And so it's actually only $2, but we give it all as a fee to uh, not-for-profits local community for profits each week, each month. So uh, the first month we raised more than three thousand dollars. Nobody complains about two dollars, and we can we, yeah. can we can universally enforce it as well. So you know when you come in and say, hey, I'm Judd, and I want you know no corkage, I say, well, what about the children and the two dollars? No, of course, who's going to argue two bucks? In fact, yeah. I think I said to you, why not make it five? No one's going to argue five. We thought about that too, and we'll see. We'll Chris, this has been really cool getting to know a little bit more about the operation and how how you just. Bring everything from the Thanks. ranch to the table. It's, it's such a great concept. Um, I always get excited every time I'm there because I know that you, know, you grew this stuff and now you're yeah. sharing it. And well, you've developed you know, the you knew where it came from, or you know where it comes from. So yeah, um, that's important. I, I really feel strongly about knowing where your food comes from. And you can taste your wine, your olive yeah, oil. Taste wine, your olive beef, oil. You can do your fruit, your food, vegetables. wine pairings. You can uh, go shopping uh, at our seasonal farmers market, which is open on the weekends. You can uh, stop in a farmstead restaurant and have a great. Uh, Farm-to-table meal. You can uh, stop to the nursery, take home. You know, 
uh, a tomato plant. If you really like that tomato salad, go plant it in, in your own garden. Uh, or learn how to do it or see it growing right out front. So You can tipple some grog with the captain if that's you right, have yeah, we, there. We call it a full circle farming experience. So, <laughs> that's right. The full, the full circle, circle experience. farming yeah. experience. Full circle farming. A lot of Fs. Yeah. All right, but do you grow your own fish, too? <laughs> We uh, get that from the local Sonoma Coast and then Sonoma Coast. Chris, it's time for you to walk the plank. Okay. Um, sorry about that, but which way is the plank? Captain, thanks a lot. Yar, yar, see you yar. soon if you make it back to shore. Yar, yar, yar. All right, Captain. Thanks. Watch the ceiling. All right, take care, Chris. You're a good swimmer, right? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And thanks to our sponsor, Judd's Hair. Some days, even I need one. What do you call the gassy pirates? A vast long meadow ranch for everyone. Mmm, delightful. Yeah, I'd walk that thing for more of this. <laughs> <laughs>